Once again, it's time for Movie Spotlight, our weekly Friday feature reviewing the latest releases at the Korean box office and online. Joining me this week in the studio are our film critics Jason Beshevace, and this week we have Mark Raymond here with us as well. Gentlemen, it's good to see you. Hello. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, so once again, we are filming this segment and it will be uploaded online so our listeners can look out for that on our KBS World Radio YouTube page as well. So as the latest COVID wave continues in Korea, it seems distributors are holding off on uh, releases, releasing new local features. So we have two Hollywood releases to review this week, both quite significant in their own way. First up is the action blockbuster Uncharted, starring Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. And it is based on a popular video game, right, Jason? That's right. Uh, actually, I have a copy of it at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I played it like once. <laughs> and I think it pretty much sums up the appetite I have for, for gaming. It is, though, a game that has generated a huge amount of money for Sony on its PlayStation uh, consoles, having sold more than 41 uh, million units. Uh, and yeah, there's just many, many sequels. It's no surprise then it's been made as a film by Sony Pictures, but it's taken a while for it to reach the silver screen. Mm. Uh, entered development back in 2008, and a number of directors and producers have been attached over the years, including uh, David O. Russell. Uh, now, it's Ruben Fleischer who directed this film. Uh, he's made a, a few films, including Zombieland and Venom. Now, Tom Holland, uh, we all know who Tom Holland is. Right. Uh, he stars as Nate or Nathan Drake. And Mark Wahlberg, also a, a big Hollywood star, he plays Nate's mentor, uh, mentor. And so the two central characters of the game, they go on a treasure hunt while looking for clues that uh, could locate... Uh, Nate's uh, long-lost brother also stars Antonio Banderas as the film's uh, kind of central uh, kind of villain as a ruthless hunter. So that's all you really need to know. Right. Um, not the first time, of course, that a video game has been adapted into a film. Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Rampage, Mortal Kombat. Do I need to go any <laughs> on any longer? No. Um, it's uh, needless to say, uh, films uh, adapted. Or, you know, from games don't have the best uh, track record at the box office. Yes, uh, to say the least. Like, yeah, and critically, they're, they're often panned. And um, this film, I think, is going to follow a similar pattern. Right, OK. So, yes, as we said, video game adaptions, generally, they've not been received very well. They have been quite poor over the years. Uh, Mark, it seems this film doesn't buck that trend either then, even though I guess it sounds like it will be a fun adventure romp uh, inspired by Indiana Jones. Well, the game is inspired right. by Indiana Jones as well. Right. It's a uh, it's not a very good movie, uh, and <laughs> but it's an illustrative movie, I think, of the the gaming problem, the problem of adapting adapting an interactive medium like games right. to the cinema. Uh, because when you watch the movie and you watch, you kind of go, nobody would ever write this movie if you weren't adapting it from a game. Mm. You would never write it this way. Right. Right? Like, it has very much the, the hallmark of a game, which is that the plot's very simple, but there's these kind of puzzle aspects to it, mm. which, of course, there are movies that have these kind of puzzle aspects to it, but not as blatant as this. You know, the screenwriting <laughs> okay. would be much more sophisticated, even in a Hollywood action blockbuster. Mm. Like, if you compare it to, let's say, like the National Treasure movies, those movies that came out, uh, they are more, like, crafted like movies than this one was mm. is even though they have similar kind of features to them or even like the da vinci code or things like that mm. yeah it's just it just this one feels just more clunky because i think it's adapting the game it's trying to put in the things that made the game popular um and again it's it's not a terrible movie like uh, tom holland's very charismatic and he actually cares he's actually trying which sometimes <laughs> these hollywood stars don't when they're in a movie that they know isn't very good they just kind of go to the motions he's mm. you know putting in you know the effort and you know there's some decent supporting performances but it's just not really you know it's not a bad two it's not like the worst two hours you can spend in a movie theater but it's not a great movie yeah Okay, so not a ringing endorsement. Jason, what about you? 
Well, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's not very good, uh, as Mark said. Uh, it's it's very derivative. Uh, Mark mentioned National Treasure, and I felt I mean those films were kind of panned by the critics, but I kind of enjoy them. I mean, Nick Cage is fun in in those films. <laughs> Um, and yeah, the storytelling is just, it's just really, uh, it's really predictable. You know exactly where it's going. Um, Tom Holland is fine. He, he does, he tries his best. Uh, there's this uh, action set piece at the beginning of the film that, that you also see later on. You kind of see him trying to be like Tom Cruise, you know, jumping out of an aeroplane. Um, it doesn't quite work, uh, although it is one of the more interesting sequences in the film. Um, and the chemistry between the two leads is there, but honestly, I found it a real drag, and mm. uh, I needed something to kind of uh, excite me and inject me with adrenaline, and it didn't do it. But the next film that we talk, we're going to talk about certainly did. <laughs> right, but before we get there, Mark, is there ever going to be a video game adaptation uh, that's going to be a good film <laughs> at some I point? I think so. I think, and I think because I think video games themselves are, are evolving right? right and they're becoming more sophisticated in their storytelling as well as the technology evolves and as the gaming it just will take a kind of i think it's not going to be one of the big like the big blockbuster games let's say right mm. like these that are too kind of i think it's going to take a adaptation of something that's a little bit more offbeat or maybe like an indie game of some kind but i, th I think that could work and who knows they might I'm not like a huge gamer myself, as Jason mentioned. He's not as either. Maybe there already has been, like on like mm. a lower level, but the big Hollywood ones have not worked yet. yet. I'm not sure when that will happen. Yeah. Uh, how's the film looking to do here in Korea, Jason? Especially after uh, the Spider-Man film, No Way Home, starring Tom Holland, pulled over 7 million viewers. Yeah, well, uh, ahead of its release on Wednesday, over 70,000 uh, 70, tickets have been pre-sold, which in COVID times is not that bad bad mm. uh, and it's illustrative I think of Tom Holland's increasing box office clout. He is the biggest Hollywood star there is at the moment suddenly the, a young Hollywood star mm. uh, and you know, the thing is with Marvel superheroes the stars never seem to you know have the same box office draw you know, in other films, you know, Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans. If Tom Holland, though, I think I could, I sense he could be different. He's young, he's charming, he knows how to handle the media. Um, and certainly he's trying to cultivate a, a persona outside this Spider-Man universe. And this film is tracking to do quite well globally, uh, despite COVID and, uh, and the crisis in the UK. Ukraine, where incidentally it generated $1.3 million on its opening weekend, and in Russia, of all places as well, it accumulated $4.5 million on its opening weekend. So I think it will do okay, at least mm. on its opening weekend. Um, uh, we'll have to see how, whether it has any legs. Okay, so that was Uncharted. Let's move on now to our next film, Licorice Pizza. That's been uh, much better received already, having scored three Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, along with Best Director and Best Original Screenplay for Paul Thomas Anderson. Mark, before we talk about the film's story, let's talk very briefly about the filmmaker himself, because he is an interesting figure in the industry, isn't he? Yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson's probably the most critically acclaimed director of his generation, right? of the, the generation that were... Uh, he was born in 1970, so he's coming, he kind of comes of age in the 90s when uh, the kind of indie, the American independent cinema boom kind of happens. And he's sort of part of that. He makes a movie called Hard Eight, which gets good reviews. And then he makes Boogie Nights, which is a huge sensation. It launches actually the career of Mark Wahlberg, uh, mm. uh, who we just talked about. Uh, it's a, a huge film. And then he goes on, he continues to make these films like Magnolia, um, and then eventually There Will Be Blood, which might be his most critically acclaimed film with Daniel Day-Lewis in 2008. And he continues uh, to uh, kind of throughout his career kind of mature into becoming, his early films are kind of, they're very exciting, but they're a bit more kind of derivative of the new Holly uh, filmmakers who came before him, like Martin Scorsese and Robert Altman. But by the 2000s, especially by the the, uh, the film The Master, which I think is his best film in 2012, he's become you know his own filmmaker. It's he's uh, you mm. know in control of like he's become his own directorial kind of uh, brand name, let's say. 
And Licorice Pizza is very much a Paul Thomas Anderson film. When you watch it, if you know his other films, you'll see a lot of the characteristics of his movies, a lot of great camera movement, a lot of great um, great acting, uh, you know, great uh, use of music in, in combination with the images. So, yeah, he's, you know, one of the most exciting filmmakers around for, especially for people who are really into film and cinephiles uh, at the moment. Yeah. So hugely respected in the industry. Jason, what's this uh, new film about? It has quite an uh, intriguing title, Licorice Pizza. Yeah, it's a coming-of-age film set in L.A., California. Uh, Alana Haim stars as, as a photographer's assistant called Alana, while Cooper Hoffman uh, plays Gary Valentine, uh, a young actor like himself who falls in love with Alana. Uh, and it's this relationship that's uh, at the central, well, is the central focus of the film as mm. it explores love relationships. Uh, and growing up uh, in the um, the US in the 1970s, um, and essentially it's a romantic comedy, mm. but it's, it's a very different romantic comedy than I think many would associate with the genre. Um, and Hoffman uh, is the late Philip Seymour Hoffman's son, and so there's an interesting connection there. Uh, and the cameos in the film are, are incredible uh, and supporting roles. So we've got Sean Penn, Bradley Cooper, John C. Riley. Uh, and the film's title uh, is the name of a now defunct record store chain that at one point had 34 stores uh, in Southern California. Right, Mark, you said this film showcases some of his uh, great qualities mm -hmm. as a filmmaker. How does this compare then to his already impressive back catalogue? Where does it rank? Yeah, I don't think it's at the very top of his films, but it's a, it's a it's an excellent film, and for most other filmmakers, this would be you know the best film they probably would ever make. Uh, it's just not <laughs> it's just not his. Uh, it's an interesting uh, film. It's uh, like Jason said, it's kind of like a romantic comedy. It's really held together by the relationship because the plot really moves around oh, it's yeah. very episodic it just kind of goes from now he's doing this now mm. he's doing something completely different we don't know how much time has passed it doesn't really tell us uh it actually for for me like uh most movies i think have too much exposition in them mm. like too much like telling you everything this movie has almost no exposition so you really have to kind of keep <laughs> right. up with it, it moves mm. really really fast uh, but it's exciting you know again the performances even though these are two newcomers um but like uh, Jason mentioned, Philip Seymour Hoffman had worked a lot with Paul Thomas Anderson before his death. And, mm. uh, and so, you know, he, he has familiar with him. Paul Thomas Anderson's actually directed the, uh, the ha some music videos for the group Haim, who Alana Haim is a member of. Mm. So he has some familiarity with them, but this is really him working with not quite non-professionals, but very kind of um, not a seasoned actors. And he gets really great performances out of them, which... Uh, 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 and I think that's kind of a skill of a director knowing that, okay, these are younger actors who are not experienced, but I can do things to get these great performances out of them. So it's kind of a testament to his skill that he's able to do so. Jason, did you enjoy it as well? And does it have a chance to win some of the big prizes at the Oscars? Uh, yeah, I know. I love the film. Um, I think Mark touched uh, upon many of the things I liked about it. Uh, the characters aren't really clearly defined. Uh, and so you're constantly trying to learn more about the characters at, at an incredibly fast pace. And uh, it almost feels like a film about Hollywood itself as well, you know, the, the, just, just how yeah. everyone's a performer and you've got this, this young actor. And I, I, I would add that in, in, in the story, the, the boy, he, he's a 15-year-old boy and he, he, he actually looks a lot older than that and he's pretty, pretty clever. Uh, and, and then uh, Alana's much older. She's in mm. her mid-20s. And so there's an interesting dynamic there uh, and I also love the way uh, Paul Dum Thomas Anderson handles comedy uh, there are moments in the film that reminded me very much of almost like a Peter Sellers film um, as for the uh, nominations I think it stands a, a really good chance of winning best original screenplay it's worth noting that Paul Thomas Anderson doesn't really care about the Oscars so he doesn't <laughs> campaign uh, and the thing is campaigning campaigning whether they like it or not is, is a big deal so right. it's about going to the luncheons and obviously COVID and all that makes it a bit more difficult but um, 
uh, still, you know, he clearly, I mean, I'm sure he, I can't really swear on the radio, but I'm, I'm sure there's <laughs> things you, you would probably like, uh, you probably articulate it quite well. Uh, mm. But um, yeah, it, I see it winning perhaps best original screenplay, not so much best director. I think Jane Campion is, is a lock for that. And best picture is wide open, but I don't think this is one of the leading contenders in that category. Okay, still a great film, it sounds like. That was uh, Licorice Pizza, which is out now in cinemas here in Korea. We'll wrap it up there for this week's uh, Movie Spotlight. Jason, Mark, thank you for your reviews as always, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.